you can be seated. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I do a little quick thought here. And can I get this thrush stays out just a little bit? Is that okay? Yep. Say hi to three people as you're being seated. Don't just sit down. At least three. All right, can I get my, yeah, awesome. You doing good? How did Josh do this morning? I was, I was up in, can we get this out just a little further? Just give me a bit of room. I, I was up in, huh? Yeah, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. I can, I can handle a, a moving stage. Ready, watch this. I'm floating. I was up in Richmond this morning and uh, yeah, that's good. You can stop now. Oh, and uh, I just did that for you. I promise you. All right. So last month I was here and I shared about Luke four eighteen, And I said this, it said in the Bible, it says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me. Everybody here, listen to me. You've got to know the because of your anointing. You've got to know you're anointed, but you've got to know your because. What, why has God anointed you? What is your because? For someone here, it's to be in science. Someone else, it's in education. Someone else, it might be in medicine. Someone else might be art. It's your because. It might be sport. It might be a leader in God's house. Every one of you are leaders in God's house. You've got to know your because. I know what God's called me to do. God's called me to pastor a church. God's called me to lead in this city and in many cities and build his house. I know my because. And listen what it says now. It says, to proclaim, he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor sent, and he has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind and to set the oppressed free. Now I believe that's twofold. I believe it's literally physical eyesight that God can open people's eyes. But I believe there's a lot of people who are spiritually blind and they can't see what's really going on. If I tonight could open this roof and open the skies, you would see what's really going on. There is a fourth dimension. Beyond this three-dimensional world in which we live in, it's the heavenly realms. It is more real than the seat you're sitting on. And yet, I wanna tell you, you could so just live this natural world and miss it if you didn't understand. It says spiritual things can only spiritually be discerned. I remember years and years ago, Mark Hopkins and I went into a high school and we said, we wanna do this teaching on three reasons why you should not go to a seance. Because in these schools where we were youth pastors, there was a lot of young people really getting into the occult. And it became, you know how it is, like a trendy thing to do? Like it, it kind of like it's trending. This is before Twitter. This is before Instagram, all that. It was trending. Everybody's going, man, we're going to go to a seance. That it was getting so out of hand. Teachers were actually ringing the, the, the church and saying, you need to help us. These young people are really getting in some dark things. And I said to the teacher, I said, don't worry. The devil will always overplay his hand. And so we went in, they, we came in and we did a seminar. Three reasons why you shouldn't go to a seance. So these, how many young people were there, Mark? Do you remember? It's probably about six or eight of them. And uh, that said, we're going to a seance tonight. And so they came to hear us speak about why they shouldn't go to it. And they said, well, we're still going to go. I said, well, have at it. Do what you got to do. And so they went, and I'm not exaggerating, literally with the Ouija board. Some of you just think it's a cute little thing to do. With the Ouija board, they, they were calling on these spirits to come and manifest and the board started moving things started flying and this is literally true they remember this their arms were burnt literally searing burning flesh on the Ouija board table and they started screaming and all they remembered is I taught them if ever ever you want to be free of the torment of the enemy you call on the name of the Lord and there is no darkness that he will not run into There is no power that he is not more powerful than. And these young people called on the name of Jesus. And the next day they're at school, they had bandages on their arms. They were literally physically assaulted 
by demonic forces. And do you know what the devil did? The devil overplayed his hands. These young people became the best soul winners. They gave their life to Jesus because they had experienced, can I tell you, the supernatural. And I want you to understand that it's not just the recovering of the sight of, of, of people who have no natural vision. It's actually opening people's eyes to what's really out there. Are you hearing me? You can't tell me that the spirit world is not real. It is more real than this chair you're sitting on. It is right here, right next to us. I want to put it this way. It's almost like a, it's a coexisting parallel dimension that is right next to you. You are but a breath away from the presence of God, heaven or hell. You are but a breath away. You are alive because of the grace of the goodness of God that gives you breath. Are you catching this? And so Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Bible says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power and He went around doing good. Watch, healing all those who were under the power of the devil. God anointed Jesus. You gotta know your because. And Jesus went about doing good. And what we need in the church is an army of young adults who understand that God has anointed you to go about doing good wherever it is that God's placed you and to see people set free of the work of the enemy. Amen? And we talked about you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. How many of you know all things? If you were here a month ago, you should say, yeah, I know all things. But you don't know what you know yet. It's not until the Holy Spirit, you tune into the Holy Spirit. He'll reveal to you what you need to know to do what He's called you to do. And it says that anointing abides. Remember, I, I prophesied over that young lady there. And I said that when God gives you a gift, He doesn't take it back. The gift and the calling of God is without repentance. So you can use it for good or you can use it for the enemy. It's your choice. And it says that anointing abides. How many are glad God doesn't leave you? All right. So I just want to give you three. How many want the anointing of God? Okay. That anointing is to actually see people set free. It's to have power over the enemy. Three simple things. How to get this anointing. Number one, you got to be faithful in the little things. You just have to be. Whoever is faithful, look at this, in very little is also faith. This is Jesus speaking is also faithful in much. Who was unrighteous in very little is also unrighteous in much. So let me ask you a question. Faithful in the little things. What does that mean? That means you're willing to look after being faithful with a dollar. That's a little. You're being faithful with time. You're punctual. Your yes is yes. And when you say something to someone, you're a person of your word and you follow through to what you committed to. Faithful in the little things. Well, it's just a little lie. It's just a little compromise. It's just a little bending of the truth. Faithful in the little things and God will make you faithful, the Bible says, over much. Can I tell you, God is so interested in the little. You have no idea how interested God is in the little. The little. The little. We like to go after the big. God says, beware of the foxes. Listen to it. The little foxes that spoil the vine. We all want the vine. We all want our lives looking good, full of fruit, blessed, anointed. But the Bible says, beware of the little foxes. A little surrender to temptation. A little sleep, the Bible says. The Bible says, love not sleep, lest you come to poverty. God is never interested whether we get too much sleep. But every time I read my Bible, God is way more interested that we're actually not using our time right. Be faithful in the little, meeting deadlines, 
being faithful in the little, about not looking, hey, look how close I can get to the edge of compromise and yet not compromise. But it's how far can you stay away from the edge? Be faithful in the little. Watching too much internet, watching social media too much, getting your world view by those things rather than the Word of God. Be faithful in the little and God will make you faithful over much. Second thing is you gotta love righteousness and you gotta hate sin. And I gotta be honest with you, I don't always hate sin. I don't always. There, and, and by the way, if sin wasn't so attractive, there wouldn't be so many sinners out there. Write this down. The torment of the temptation to sin. Listen to this. The torment of the temptation to sin is one thing. But the torment of the consequences of sin is much worse. And there's not a person in this room who has not undergone the torment of the temptation to sin. And that temptation to sin is not a sin. Are you hearing me? In and of itself is not a sin. But when you give in to it, the, the torment of the consequences of sin is much worse. You catching it? So the Bible says that God anointed Jesus. Watch this scripture. Look at this. Put it up on the screen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Do we have it? You have loved, watch this, righteousness and hated lawlessness. That word lawlessness literally means sin. Jesus, it's speaking of, have loved righteousness and hated sin. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. So even Jesus, how on which He was anointed, was based on this Scripture. It says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing everybody who's tormented by the enemy. How many want to see your friends healed from being tormented from the enemy? Depression, anxiety, suicide, people lost in gender confusion, tormented, who am I? Are you hearing me? And yet God could actually anoint you to help your friends, but that anointing will come if you're faithful in the little, and number two, if you love righteousness and hate sin. And I gotta be honest with you, when I first became a Christian, I loved getting drunk. And I read in the Bible, the drunkard has no place in the kingdom of God. Woe to him who tarries long in the wine. Woe to him who wakes up with redness of eyes. And I'm like, dang, I love going out with my friends and we just get blind drunk. And I had to make a decision that day, God, I'll love what you love. And even though I don't hate it, I will hate what you hate. And if you hate that, I will hate that. Even though I love it. If you hate it, I'll hate it. And do you know what? I hate tomatoes. I hate them. I actually think they're the Luciferic initiation. I actually think tomatoes is the very fruit that the devil used to tempt Adam and Eve into sinning in the Garden of Eden. I actually think if you look it up in the Hebrew, it says tomatius. I, I, I'm convinced. Joe, look it up. I'm sure it's there. I'm sure it's there. Now, let me tell you something. I hate tomatoes. Anyone who knows me knows I hate tomatoes. I can't eat them. They give me ulcers. That's why I hate them. So how many know I'm not being tempted to eat tomatoes? I'm not going, oh man, I'm really feeling an urge. I hate them. You know, okay, you, and, and yet I hear people come to me all the time. Pastor, pray for me. Oh, pray for me. I've just fallen into that same temptation again and I hate it. Would you pray for me? I got stoned. I slept with my girlfriend. I slept. I, I, I shouldn't have done this. I stole some money. I, I, I was on the internet. I saw things. I, I just hate it. Well, here's the first thing I got to do. I got to help you hate what God hates. 
And don't tell me you hate doing it because you hated doing it. You'll never hear me. Imagine eating tomato were a sin. Just imagine. I personally think it is. But imagine if, imagine if I, you'd never hear me going to Sharon saying, Sharon, pray for me. Do you know how much I hate eating tomatoes? Sharon goes, yeah, I know. Well, I'm just backslidden and eating a whole crate of them. I'm not eating them because I hate them. And the only reason why we sin is because we don't hate it. And yet the Bible tells me that if we will love righteousness and hate sin, God will anoint you. Well, it makes me feel good. Yeah, we don't live by that. We live by the Word of God. We don't live by our feelings. Come on, somebody. And here's the last one. If you want the anointing of God to really see your friends set free of the power of the enemy, first it's got to work in you. Amen? But if you really want that anointing and you want God to use you when your friend's depressed and suicidal, that you would know what it is to pray over them and seem free of that. When someone's got anxiety, that you could come and bring a word that's just the, the right. You know, have you ever had someone say something to you and you just don't know what to say to them? That God would give you wisdom as to what to say to help them? That God would give you the ability to pray for someone and they to be delivered? of what the enemy's trying to torment them with? Who wants this? Who, seriously, who wants this? It's gonna take a lot more effort than just lifting your hand, but that's a good start. Who wants this? Okay, be faithful in the little things. Amen? Number two, love righteousness. Love what He loves. And you know, the Bible says there's six things the Lord hates and the seventh is an abomination to Him. Proverbs 6. And I said, God, I'm going to love what you love and I'm going to hate what you hate. No matter how I feel about it, it's what you say. And number three, if you want this anointing, you've got to be somebody who's into prayer and fasting. Not feasting, fasting. There's no E left out in the transcript here. It's prayer and it's fasting. Mark chapter 9, verse 28, the disciples tried to cast a demon out of someone and they couldn't do it. But they'd cast out many demons. But this time they couldn't. And they said, hey, Jesus, can we just have a little chat? What went wrong here? And Jesus said, Mark 9, 20, it's not up there, by the way. Sorry, guys, don't freak out. It's just, I just added it. It says, Jesus said, this kind only comes out, watch, for prayer and fasting. There are certain things that happen in life. And I'm going to tell you, they are demonic. And the only way in which you'll see certain things broken is by being a person who's familiar with prayer and fasting. I'm not talking about some big, heavy prayer life. God doesn't count your prayers. He weighs them. It's not how many times in the, like in the Catholic church, how many times you've ripped through the rosary beads. Do you know what I mean? Our Father who art in heaven, Harold be thy name. It's not how Mary full of grace and you say that 10 times. The Bible tells us don't pray repetitious prayers. Prayers that are just vain, that actually have no meaning to it. But we gotta have a relationship with God that's real. And I just wrote this down. If you want, just write this thought. Establish a consistent, continual, steadfast, and I like this one, sane like not some super spiritual, do you know what I mean? God just spoke to me, God just spoke to me, God spoke to me. I'm talking about establish a consistent, steadfast, continual, sane, ongoing relationship with Jesus. Just pray. Be a person of prayer and be a person who knows what it is when you actually see something that you've done everything you can to pray this through and it still hasn't changed, you might just want to take this scripture. This kind comes out only through prayer and fasting. And you may want to just say, I'm going to spend a day not eating anything. You might want to say, I'm going to spend three days. And I'm not saying the longer you fast, the more spiritual you are. But I believe fasting opens that spirit realm. 
Jesus fasted for 40 days and then he was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. When you pray and fast, you'll meet your enemy and you'll discover what your assignment is. If you don't know what God's called you to do yet, the best thing you could do is spend some time in prayer and fasting. And instead of eating the meal, the time that you'd normally take to eat, you read your Bible and you read the Word of God. And then you fast and you say, God, I'm giving this meal time to you and I'm going without food. I'm denying my flesh because I want to feed my spirit, man. Because I want to tell you, you have no idea how much you and I are ruled by our flesh. You have no idea. Just try not feeding it for a day and see how demanding it gets on you. See how moody you get. Can I put it this way? God said to Cain and Abel, they both gave offerings. They both gave money to God. Did you know that? They both said, God, we love you. And the Bible says, Abel gave of the first fruits. And Cain gave at the, at, in the course of time, he gave leftovers. So imagine like tonight at the end of this service, I assume we still take offerings. Yep, praise the Lord. Because I'm trying to teach you something about it. You gotta be generous to God. You with me? And God says, hey, Abel, love your offering. Well done. You, not accepting it. You just gave me your leftovers. You just, whatever was in, whatever you just happened to have on you, here God, and you tipped him. You just gave God a tip. And God says, I'm not, and God says, listen, why you, he says, why, read it, Genesis. Why are you downcast? Why are you so moody? If you do what's right, I'll accept you. He's going, why are you letting money affect and rule your emotions? I didn't favor Abel because I like him more than you. It's just that Abel put me first and you didn't. And if you do what's right, I'll accept you. Get out of your mood. You're letting your flesh determine your mood. It's got nothing to do with me not liking you. It's I didn't accept your offering. But if you do what's right, I'll accept you just like I did Abel. And he says, listen, sin is crouching at the door and you must master it. Well, the sad part of this whole story is Cain never mastered it. Cain ended up in his anger killing his brother over money, over not being able to control his mood. See, fasting puts all this under control. It's teaching your flesh, get under, get under. And I'm talking tonight about young adults, about how to be people who are anointed by God. Come on, that God wants to use you And I just gave you three simple things. Number one, be faithful in the little. Number two, love what's right and hate what's evil. And number three, be a person who is in prayer and be a person who's in fasting. If you're sitting here tonight, you're thinking this is boring. You don't understand spiritually this realm yet, but that's okay because you're hearing it for the first time. And now... You're without excuse because you've heard it. And God can even use me being boring to speak to you because when you go home tonight, you may leave me, but God will not leave you. You may leave this building, but God will not leave you. And He'll whisper in your ear. No one's ever had to tell me, you know that, you know, when you cross a line. Do you know, you, you know when you've done something wrong and as soon as you've done it, no one had to tell you. You knew it was wrong. Have you ever done that? Man, I tell you, I know that line so well. No one had to tell me. I just knew it. But if you keep crossing the line over and over again, the line disappears. And I think maybe tonight through this message, God is redrawing the line for some. He's going, come on, here's the line. God wants to anoint you 
in Jesus' name. Can we all stand up? That help anybody tonight? <clears throat> here's, here's the last scripture I'm giving and I'm done because I wanna pray for a few people. It says in a Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, this scripture here is what gave me what I'm talking to you about tonight. This scripture was spoken at a, Mark, I don't know if you remember, I think you were there. Frank Houston came and he spoke about this scripture. I've never forgotten this scripture. It has been foundational to my whole life. It says, so to yourselves, so righteousness for yourselves, reap the fruit of unfailing love. Break up your unplowed ground. Watch this. For it is time to seek the Lord until He comes. And how will you know when He's come? I'm not talking about praying grace over a meal. Lord, kill the bugs, bless the food. I'm not talking about, you know, just, just thank you, Jesus, prayers. I'm not talking about maybe saying prayers when you go to bed. Lord, I pray for a good night's sleep. I pray for no nightmares. I'm not talking about those sorts of prayers. For it is time to seek Him until He comes. How do you know when He's come? It says, and He reigns righteousness. I'm so challenged by Moses in the Old Testament. Moses wanted to see the glory of God and his face shone because he was in the presence of God. The presence of God was so real and tangible to him that he literally had to wear a veil because his face shone so bright, such as his relationship with God. Now, Moses can do that in the Old Testament. And we live in the New Testament where the veil in the temple is torn in two and we can come boldly into the very throne room of grace. How many believe we ought to wear God a whole lot better than Moses did? When you walk into your work, when you walk into your job, when you walk into your place of learning or education, you bring God with you. And everybody around should sense it and know there's something in you and on you that is different to everybody else. And I want us tonight, listen, I wonder how many of you here are not even yet filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, you don't yet have a heavenly prayer language. In other words, you don't know how to pray a language that you never learned here on earth. The Bible says we speak with the tongues of men and we speak with the tongues of angels. The Bible says in Jude, when you pray in the Spirit, you build yourself up in your most holy faith. The Bible says you make moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered. It's a heavenly prayer language. I want this to be a supernatural night. I, I believe God's healed people. I believe God's speaking to people through His Word. And I wanna pray for you tonight. If you know, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't know what it is to pray. And the Bible says when we pray in the Spirit, listen to this, we pray the perfect will of God. The Bible says we don't know how to pray as we should. How I many know that's true? But we pray in the Spirit, we pray the perfect and the pleasing will of God. I'd love to pray for people tonight who aren't yet, don't yet have a heavenly language. I wonder how many of you here tonight do have that heavenly language? Can I see your hand? Pretty well, most of you. But tonight, if you don't have it, I'd love for a few of our pastors to pray with you and for you. Would that be okay? So to, how many don't yet have a heavenly prayer language, but you'd like to receive it tonight? Who would like that? There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. This is awesome. Five, six, anybody else? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, come on, give these people a hand. This is awesome. So Mark, are you good? Yep, no, Joe, you can help me out here. Mark's been... We're praying for you for a healing. We believe God for a healing. Bobby, you gonna help me out here? Okay, those 12 people, just come and stand over here for a minute because I want, I want our pastors to pray for you. Just come and stand over here. Just, yeah, if you want this tonight, you, you walked in not having one, but you're gonna walk out with a heavenly prayer language. Come on, give a Lord a hand. <laughs> now, there's a lot more than 12 coming right now, but that's awesome. Come on, keep coming. Anybody else? You don't have this? Let me just give you, everybody else listen to this. It's gonna help you help others to get this. Here's what the Bible says. Every time in the Bible, someone got it in the book of Acts, which is where they got it. 
It says, not every time, but five times it's mentioned people got filled with the Holy Spirit. Three out of the five times, it says that other Christians who have it laid hands on them and that helped them in receiving it. That's why I've asked some of these pastors to come. Because Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, we haven't even heard there be a Holy Spirit. And Paul laid hands on them. And he said, Lord, I pray you fill them with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke in a heavenly prayer language. Okay, the first time, no one had it. So no one could lay hands on people to get it because no one had it. That was the day of Pentecost. It's in your Bible. The only time that it doesn't mention was on the laying on hands was because Peter was a reluctant, and I don't know how to say this, but he was, he was, um, he was racist. He didn't realize he was. What was he? He was fully racist. You know why? Because he never thought people who were not Jewish people could get the Holy Spirit. He thought that was the distinctive. Am I right, Joe? This is pure Bible. He would never have laid hands on them to get it because the thought was they'd never get it. Every other time that someone received the Holy Spirit. So we're going to lay hands on you tonight. And we're going to believe God for the laying on of hands. God's going to give you what you ask for. The Bible says if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, He'll give you what you ask for. He won't give you a demon. He won't give you something you didn't know. He'll give you. But the problem with this is it won't make sense to you because it's not a language you understand. But you've got to be willing to step out in faith and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to get these guys to begin to pray for you. Uh, anybody else? Josh, come on over here. And, and I'm going to get these guys to lay hands on you and pray with you. And I want you to be willing to say, Father, matter of fact, just say this with me. Say, Lord, tonight, everybody say this tonight. Lord, tonight, I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. I pray for a heavenly prayer language. I receive it tonight by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, pastors, begin to pray for these people here. While that's happening, while that's happening, there's a couple of people in this room and you really believe that you're destined for greatness. You really believe there's something on your life. You are, this, the, you, you, this is what you say. There's got to be more to life than just this. No matter how good a day you've had, when you go home and put your head on the pillow, it still hasn't filled the void. There's a couple of you. And you've been trying to fill the void with stuff and everything you filled it with. It was good on the moment, but you're still left feeling empty. It's gotta be more than life than just this. I wanna tell you what it is. There is. It's a God-shaped hole. You can fill it with all the fun things that you want to fill it with, but the only thing that actually will fill it is God Himself. And I believe there are people here tonight and you have not yet given your life to Jesus. You're not yet a Christian. And I want to pray for you tonight. I'm speaking to you. You know there's more to life than what you're doing. It's because God has a plan for your life. Listen, before you were born, I knew you, says the Lord. Before you were ever, ever born, God knew you and has a call on your life. And I wonder tonight, are there people here? And I know there are. And you need to make a decision tonight. I'm gonna give my life to Jesus. I want to know what God's plan and what God's purpose and what God's call in my life is. And I want to pray for people who've never given their life to Jesus. Look at me now. And I want to pray for people who once were living for God, but you know tonight, even as I spoke, the Holy Spirit was tapping you on the shoulder. Come on, man. Get this right. Come on. Come home. Get back on fire for God. Who's believing with me tonight? People are going to make a decision to follow after God. So this is what I want to do. I want to pray for you tonight. No matter how young you're old, how, how young you are, how old you are. No matter how where you see, oh, Steve, you don't know me. You don't know the things I've done. No, I don't. But trust me, you don't know me. And you don't know the life I've lived before I was a Christian. God loves you. 
and God has a plan for your life. The harder you fight, I'm gonna tell you, and there's some people tonight and you're standing here, listen to me, and you're standing here and you're just nothing but plain angry right now. And all these emotions are coming to the surface. It's because God is getting a hold of you and challenging you that no matter how much you try to fill your life with other things, it's still shallow and empty and meaningless. And you're now being confronted with the reality of the supernatural, the power and the presence of a holy God that loves you and actually created you and knows the plans He has for you. And I'm telling tonight, God is on your case. I wanna pray for you tonight. Do you say, Steve, pray for me. I wanna give my life to Jesus. Steve, you're talking to me. Steve, I need to get right with God all over the building. Already three people have made decisions online. Can I pray for you tonight? Can I pray for you? How'd you go? Do we, how'd we go over here? I wanna make sure. I wanna make sure we, yep, we're good. I wanna make sure everybody got this. I'm gonna make sure I'm not gonna be, you all did. Everybody, anybody not? Everyone got, you didn't? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. All right, that's awesome. I love honesty. I love that. God's not worried. Come over here, all you who, who got it. Would you help me lay hands on her? Everybody who's filled the Holy Spirit, reach out your hand because I wanna make sure you get what you came for tonight in Jesus' Name. Are you ready? Okay, just why don't you, do, get, you know, the reason why we close our eyes is just to help us not worry about what's going on around us and get distracted. Come on, would you pray out? I can already see you've got the words on your lips. You're speaking in the Holy Spirit. Come on, keep going. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, keep going. Come on, just keep praying. Amen. Come on. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit right now. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You're praying in the Spirit right now. I can see it. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. It was just that simple. All right. You've never given your life to Jesus if you're away from God. Look at me now. We're going to pray and I want to pray for you. And I'm not going to go, hey, listen, you know what? I'm tired, of the, I'm tired of how the world pushes on us. Man, you need to try this and you want to try this. And people are so bold and out there. But when the church talks like we talk, you're being too pushy. This is heaven and hell. This is life and death. Amen. And if you can't stand for God in here, you'll never stand for Him out there. So tonight, look at me. Every person, look at me. If you say, Steve, tonight, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Steve, tonight, I wanna get right with God. Just lift your hand right where you're standing. Say, pray for me. Pray for me. Lift your hand right now. That's it. Who else will lift your hand? Say, pray for me. I wanna give my life to Jesus. God bless you. Who else tonight will lift your hand? Come on, come on. Lift your hand right now. Maybe you brought somebody and you're really believing tonight would be the night that they would meet Jesus. Just give them a nudge. Say, come on, man. It's time to get right with God. Anybody else? Lift your hand. High enough, long enough for me to see it. Everybody, come on, let's be in prayer. I know there are others. I know there's at least two more that need to make this decision tonight. Come on, there's more to life than what you're experiencing. There's gotta be more to life. I'm telling you there is. It's knowing Jesus. It's living for God. It's making a decision to get right with God. Come on, there's one, but I know there's at least two more. And those online, there's three people right there that have made a decision. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. I know there's two more in the building. Lift your hand. Where are you? You say, stay the night. I need to get right with God. There they are, right there. Two more. Amen. Wonderful. Here's what happened. Somebody stood here and went, phew, I thought it was me. It is you too. Where are you? You just went, phew, thought it was me. Hey, come on. Who's that person? Who's that person? Where are you? I'm looking for you. I'm waiting for you. Lift your hand. You literally went, oh, thank goodness. Who was it? Did I see someone lift their hand? Who was it? Where are you? Amen. Come on, let's pray for a moment. This is important, church. This is really important. Anybody else? Lift your hand. You went, okay, okay. Thank God it wasn't me. Well, God's reaching out to you now because the fact that you're wondering if it was, you need to be sure tonight. You need to seal this deal 
in your heart. You need to know that you know that you know that you know that you know. Who are you? I want to pray for you. Where are you? This is what always happens. They always come up after the meeting. And they always tell me, it was me. I just didn't want to raise my hand. I didn't want to get embarrassed. Hey, there you are. Well done. Let's pray this prayer. Let's pray this prayer. Say, Lord, tonight, everybody say it out loud. Lord, tonight, I ask You to make Yourself real to me. I ask You to come into my life to forgive me my sins. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Come on, I want to do one more thing. Is that okay? Uh, can we get the stage in? I, I want to, if you tonight say, God, I want your anointing. If we can get the stage to come in. God, I want that anointing. And I'm willing, I'm willing to be faithful in the little things. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get, be really good at doing the little things right. God, I want that anointing. I want to see people I want my life to be anointed and I want to help others. If you're willing to say, God, I'm going to do that. I'm willing to really follow after you, to love what you love and hate what you hate. Amen. And number three, you're willing, and I want you to think about it now, to be a person that begins to pray and fast. Maybe to start a fast, it's skip a meal. Maybe starting a fast means, I don't know, you know, the first fast you may ever do, maybe I'm gonna fast off the internet. That'd be a miracle for some of you. Social media. But it's more than that, but maybe that's a start. And I wanna fill this altar right here with people who say, God, I'm hungry for you. God, I want that anointing in my life. I want you to use me. I want you to come right now. Just come stand down the front because I wanna pray a prayer over you. Come on, that's it. Come on down here. You say, Lord, I want that anointing. I want it. I really want, I'm gonna love righteousness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna love what you love, hate what you hate, even if I don't hate it. Come on, Lord, I'm gonna be a person of prayer and fasting and I'm gonna be faithful in the little things. I'm not gonna lie to get me out of trouble. I'm gonna own it. I'm gonna say, yeah, I just didn't do it. I'm sorry, I'll try to be better. I'll try and do better. Hey Amen, what's your name? Kyle. Kyle. Awesome. Amen. You got the heart of David. You got a good heart. Some people greatly underestimate you, but I want to tell you, God doesn't. And that, you have no idea the call that's on your life. The devil's scared of you. Matter of fact, when I looked at you, I felt like the Lord just showed me that there's actually been from the enemy more than one attempt on your life to take you out because he sees what's in your future. And the enemy tried to shortchange, you know, he, he tried that to Jesus, you know that. He tried to take Jesus out before Jesus laid down his life. And I wanna say this to you, that God has an awesome call on your life and never underestimate what God can do through you. Never underestimate. Don't sell yourself short and don't let other people sell you short. God will use you. And He's aware of everything you've said and everything you've done, and He still will use you. And He loves you. Amen. Don't sell yourself short. Don't underestimate yourself. Are you hearing that? Amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand. <clears throat> I'm going to ask some of our pastors. I, you know, I just believe in the land. We've, I thank God COVID was finally working our way through that. The Bible talks about through the laying on of hands. COVID, it's been one of those things. We're also socially distanced. And thank God. I mean, God can touch anyone anywhere. God doesn't, you know what I mean? But tonight, I just really believe that God's going to really mark some people. Really mark some people. There's people in this room standing down here and you know that God's called you. And I don't know what that call is because it's not just to be a pastor. It's not just to be a worship leader. It's not just to be a missionary to go to Africa. It's wherever you are that God wants to use you. Amen. And that anointing is where you are. I can't go where you are. You can't go where I am. But we can all do and go what God's called us to do. 
Amen. You've said yes to God and it's come at a great price. And I'm gonna tell you something. It'll be worth it, my friend. You know who I'm talking to. You've said yes to God and it's come at a great price. And it looks like in some ways that in some ways your life actually has less because of that decision to say yes to Jesus. If you had it just gone your own way, your life could have more in it. But I wanna say this to you. It'll be worth it in the long haul. And if you will just stay on course for God. I'm sitting here. I was 17 when I gave my life to Jesus. My friends all thought I was crazy. They all joked me and laughed at me. And they all said it's a fad. Well, I'm now 58. or about to turn 58. It's the longest fad I've ever lived in. And I want to tell you, I was watching my friends around me and it looked like they were living the life and having all the... You know what I mean? All the fun and all the good times. But I look at my life and I look at them and I wouldn't swap my life for any of theirs. And I want to say that to you in Jesus' name. Does that make sense? It does. Oh! To hell with the devil! Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. Come on, Father, I pray tonight. Pastors, come and lay hands on these people tonight. They're wanting to say yes to God. They're wanting to say, yes, I'm gonna love righteousness. And let's pray for the power of God to touch these, every single person standing here tonight. Lord, for everybody out there in the audience, for everybody online, I'm asking God, let Your power come into this room. Lord, mark people, touch people, anoint them, I pray. Lord, in the Name of Jesus, that anointing abides. Lord, as we lay hands on them, touch them with the power of God. Touch them with the power of God. Lord, tonight in the Name of Jesus, touch them. Oh God, mark them. Lord, lay Your hand upon them. Father, I'm asking for the anointing of God. Lord, the power of God in the Name of Jesus. There it is. Receive right now in Jesus' Name. There's the power of God right now. Receive. Come on, man. Receive it. Amen. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank You. I thank You, Lord. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by Your Spirit. This young man, God's touching you. I'm telling you, I see the power of God on you. Father, touch him now. Mark him in the name of Jesus. That's it. Let him, let him. That's it. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come here, man. God's not, come here. Come here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for the power of God. Devil, you are defeated. I drive you off his life. Loose him now in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on. Father, loose him now. Release your power. Devil, you are defeated. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. I thank You, Lord, now for breakthrough and deliverance in the Name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, let's get one of the dead Caleb, keep praying. Come on. God's not done. Amen. Amen. What's your name? Alana. Awesome. When I looked at you, I felt the Holy Spirit say this Scripture. You know, when there's a guy in the Bible, he talks to his, I think it's his niece. His name's Mordecai, and he's talking to Esther. You know the story? And it said, who knows whether God brought you into the kingdom for such a time as this? And I actually feel like this is a very important season in your life. And and, and God placed Esther in a place and a time for a great purpose that was bigger than herself. And of course, if you know the story, she ultimately ended up seeing all Israel from being massacred and wiped out. And I just feel like for you, this is a real time for you to be in prayer. I mean, we ought to pray all the time, but this this is, God is doing something foundation in your life that's setting you up for your future. And I believe that such a time as this is your time now to really follow after God And just say yes to Jesus and say no to the world.
I've said that to so many people. Say yes to Jesus and say no to the world. The world can look so enticing. The world can look so right, so good, but it's so shallow. And God is so real and God is so good. Amen. For such a time as this. Amen. I don't know what decisions you're making in your life right now, but I wanna encourage you. Everything that's God, say yes. Everything that's of the enemy, just say no. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's good, isn't He? All right, what am I gonna do? Josh, who am I giving to? Luke. Hey, listen, I love you guys. I'm so, so happy to see what God's doing here. I'm so good we're finally coming through this season. I think we are not isolating ourselves. We need each other. Amen. I wanna encourage you to love what God loves. You know what God loves? He loves His church. Don't be a lone ranger. Do you know what God loves? He loves community. Get in a community group. 